What's going on, Huda Nation? Ross Jackson here from Canal Street Chronicles. Every week, we're going to do a little bit of a weekly review just to kind of give initial reactions, initial thoughts following every game, and then talk a little bit about top performers, things like that, and what we hope to see moving ahead to the next game. As always, we encourage you to also take part. Uh, let us know what you thought about the game in the comments. Throw down the like, throw down a subscribe, all that good stuff. But more importantly, we just want to interact. We want to engage with you. So let us know what you thought about this Sunday victory for the New Orleans Saints to open up the season week one. 34 to 23 uh, to open up this win here against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If I told you, I got my notes here. If I told you that Drew Brees threw for a 60% completion percentage, 160 yards, Michael Thomas had five targets for seven catches and 17 receiving yards with no touchdowns. And Alvin Kamara only had 16 rushing yards and only six and only 13 receiving yards up until the two minute and 33 second mark left in the game. I don't think you would have believed that this was going to be a double digit win for the New Orleans Saints. And so my initial reaction is very much like what everybody else's has been so far, that this was a fantastic game when it came to the Saints defense and special teams. They won in two out of the three elements of the game and then kind of stalemated with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady didn't look fantastic. Drew Brees didn't look incredible, but still walked away with two touchdowns in this game. Tom Brady, though, threw two interceptions. Marcus Williams came through with the pick. I keep telling y'all, I'm a Marcus Williams truther, y'all. Uh, no, I'm all about Marcus Williams, and I was glad to see him get an interception uh, to open up the season here. Janoris Jenkins, who just everybody knew was going to be a huge factor for New Orleans, uh, allowing them to really play the style that they want to play, more physical style in the secondary, and we saw that pay off. At, look, Marshawn Lattimore locked down. Uh, Mike Evans yet again, no catches uh, when my, when when Mike Evans was covered by uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Mike Evans, of course, ended up catching a touchdown in garbage time later on in the game. He ended up getting lined up on in the slot on the inside, matched up with Demario Davis, got open in the corner of the end zone. Marshawn Lattimore almost got to that one too, though. Uh, but look, man, this was a, a great game when it came to the Saints, and and I know that the offense didn't really get clicking. I mean, the they averaged two point four yards per carry on the ground. And really, you saw 15 carries go to Latavius Murray, only 12 to Alvin Kamara. But I liked the usage between the two running backs a lot. We saw Latavius Murray get the carries a little bit earlier on in drives to kind of start to wear down the front seven, wear down the defensive line, and then allow Alvin Kamara to work in space, whether it be sort of on those stretch runs, those outside zone runs, or passes behind the line of scrimmage that they use as an extension of the run, either hitting him out in the flats or getting him involved in the screen game. Alvin Kamara's first touchdown came on a 12-yard screen that for a second looked like it wasn't going to go anywhere, but then he just flew up the, the numbers there and was right Right into the end zone uh, out of nowhere. So, I mean, when you look at the way that the Saints performed in this game on offense, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't the usual output that we're used to seeing from the New Orleans Saints who scored over 30 points several times last season, over 30 points several times over the last three seasons on the way to getting 37 wins over the last three years. And, you know, look, I had my reservations about the Saints going into this game because, you know, over the last six years, they were one in five to open up the game. And it was never really because the offense wasn't ready to go. The offense had been averaging over 29 points per game over those six games. It was the defense that was the biggest concern, allowing only over 34 points per game on their end. But this time around, this defense showed up and this defense really, really put a hurting on uh, Tom Brady, getting into that backfield a lot. Whoever was lined up over Donovan Smith ended up getting into the backfield several times. We saw from Trey Hendrickson, we saw from Carl Granderson. Cam Jordan went over to that side at one point. Cam Jordan had a couple of wins over the rookie Tristan Wirfs, who otherwise kind of held his own. He did pretty well during this game. Uh, Leonard Fournette held to five carries, five yards, so he wasn't you know that much of a factor, which wasn't really a big surprise. He had kind of just shown up in Tampa Bay, but they leaned a lot more on Ronald Jones, who was looking bigger, but didn't seem like he was really ready to take all that punishment up the middle that he took. Uh, and look... Uh, I mean, when you look at all of this, I think the Saints just did an excellent job here again on defense. And then over on the special team side, that was just a hell of a game. You look at Thomas Morstead starting several of the Bucks' possessions inside their own 15. The Bucks never started a single possession in this game beyond their own 25. The Saints started just about 
everyone before the uh, you're within their own or beyond their own 35 rather so the field position battle was absolutely won by the saints time of possession was won by the saints opportunistic defense won by the saints no turnovers versus three turnovers by the Tampa Bay Bucks, including a pooch kick, I guess you could say, that two Tampa Bay Buccaneers went to field this kick, and then it ended up bouncing off them and, them, and then Benny Fowler, who was just activated off the practice squad for the purposes of this game, taking advantage of the COVID rules there and then getting an opportunity for him to uh, get out there and operate on special teams, which is where he really stood out during camp. And then there he was to make that fumble recovery on that kickoff and then end up doubling up some points there, or at least doubling up a couple of scores possessions there for the Saints because of his play in special teams. We saw the same thing earlier on in the first half with a blocked kick. I almost said a blocked punt, but a blocked field goal uh, by Margus Hunt, six foot eight, six foot nine, 36 inch vertical coming into the NFL. He used every bit of that vertical and every bit of that reach to get uh, a blocked kick there to deny some points and wipe some of those points off the board. So you saw a lot of good things from special teams. As we mentioned, you saw a lot of great things from the defense. You even heard that DeMario Davis got a three-year, $27 million extension. Aaron Andrews breaking that during the game. It was nothing but good news for the New Orleans Saints uh, during this one. Michael Thomas, though, uh, look, only five targets, three catches, 17 yards. Not really a factor in this game aside from occupying the defense. And the Saints, you know, Drew Brees spread it out. He got he had targets to nine different receivers. You saw both Jerry Cook and uh, Alvin Kamara lead the way there. Alvin Kamara had his two touchdowns, nearly a third touchdown in this game. You saw Jared Cook come out there with five catches and 80 yards, including a 46-yard bomb down the left sideline. The safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just didn't get back there. Jamel Dean thought he had help. He did not because the safety bit up on Drew Brees' pump fake, and then Drew just aired it out. Curious to see how many more of those he's got left in his arm all throughout the season. That was about 42, 43 air yards there for that pass from Drew Brees. So that's certainly something that we've uh, been looking for and uh, looking forward to seeing because they've talked about it so much during camp. Uh, the Saints, though, did not have any interest in letting the foot off the gas whatsoever. You saw this big 38-yard pass on the double pass. Drew Brees takes uh, the snap, throws it backwards to Taysom Hill, and then Taysom Hill skies it across the field to Alvin Kamara, who gets a little bit of a catch and run out of it. That was with two minutes and 33 seconds left in the game. And with 22 seconds left, uh, Alvin Kamara almost got into the end zone on a fourth and two run. He was about literally a millimeter short from getting in there. So there was no intent there for Sean Payton, the New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara, any of them to really take their foot off the gas at all. They wanted 40 points in this game, but they settled for a win and 34 points on an 11 point margin there holding the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to 23 points. And of course, the biggest touchdown of that game, I'll say the biggest touchdown, but I'll just say the most exciting touchdown of the game coming, of course, from Janoris Jenkins with the pick six, taking it back over 30 yards to the house. He talked about it after the game. He said that he and Marshawn Lattimore had been working on film and they saw from the Tampa Bay last year that the speed outs was a route concept and a play that they really, really liked to call out of a certain formation. They didn't see it at all during the first half, knew they were going to see it in the second half. And sure enough, the first possession uh, after Tampa Bay came back with the ball there, Janoris Jenkins saw it, read it, left it, picked it, housed it. Simple. That was his eighth, 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 I said, career interception returned for a touchdown or pick six. I think is where I was trying to go there. Uh, but his eighth career pick six, which makes him the, uh, that gives him the most amongst active players in the NFL. And it ties him for fifth all time. You've got 12, 11, 10, nine, and then his eight would be the fifth highest total. Several players tied there, including Janoris Jenkins, and hopefully he'll get a couple more of those this year because he has been a bright spot for the Saints defense. And really, the Saints defense was a bright spot for the Saints team here in this game. So a lot of fun stuff here. A couple other standout players that I have written down. Uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, CeeDee Deuce, he led the team with 10 total tackles. He also had a pass deflection as well, or a pass defense as well. He was all over the field playing in the slot. Remember, PJ was inactive to start this game. He might have been the guy to start in the nickel position with CD or CJ Gardner Johnson coming on for dime sets. But this time you saw him playing in the slot and the, or playing in the nickel with DJ Swearinger operating in the dime set. So a very physical team there. The Buccaneers could not run against their nickel set, even though they were down a linebacker. Uh, uh, Caden Ellis actually got the start at Sam linebacker in those base sets, but the Saints 
really only had him on for three plays because only played base defense for three plays for the most part. They played nickel or they played dime. So you really got to see uh, CJ Gardner Johnson or CD Deuce uh, out there making a lot of plays and flying around. We've also got here Trey Hendrickson, two hits and one sack. Uh, he made Donovan Smith look like a fool all night to the point where Bruce Arians called out Donovan Smith after the game and basically said, very disappointed in his performance, he had just about the easiest assignment out there, trying essentially talking down on Trey Hendrickson, who abused the left tackle all throughout the night. Carl Granderson had a nice move on him as well, got a sack fumble, forced to fumble there. The Saints weren't able to recover it, but yeah, man, it was it was a great, great, great night for that defense and for the special teams. I know I keep saying it, I know I keep harping on it, but it really was such a big part of what this team did. Did the Saints uh, third down defense also very good? They forced several several third and long situations for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay converted five of 13 third downs. All five of those third downs were third and ones. Anything longer than that, the Saints kept them from converting and they won on first down. They won on second down. The Saints just did a great job here on defense. And you know, the only thing that's going to happen with the Saints offense is that they're going to settle in and they're going to get better. And if this team can keep up the production and continue to improve over the defensive side and the special team side, while also settling in and improving and getting better over on the offensive side, this team, there's a lot to be excited about. I'll just say it that way. There's a lot to be excited about. Uh, the one down thing in this game, uh, Michael Thomas ended up with a high ankle injury. No one is using the word sprain, which I think is very important to point out but ended up with a high ankle injury. Latavius Murray toward the end of the game kind of rolled up on his left ankle, kind of twisted a little bit. He looked like he was moving fine on the sideline when he got back out there, but you know, ankle injuries, it's really the next day that you feel them. So we'll see. The Saints thankfully have a Monday night game coming up against the Las Vegas Raiders traveling to Las Vegas to open up Allegiant Stadium. Of course, there'll be no fans in attendance to see it happen, but still very exciting for that Monday night matchup. Does give Michael Thomas a little bit more time till he really has to get going on that leg to figure figure out just how available he's going to be. Uh, the first practice will be on Thursday, so that'll be our first injury report. We'll also look forward to seeing if Marcus Davenport comes back. Sean Payton said Monday night on WWL Radio that they expect that he will be back sooner, uh, so that's good news. But he was dealing with an elbow injury that had they rushed him in, it could have ended up him, uh, they could have ended with him having to be out longer, so they made the smart decision there. Cesar Reeves was present at practice on Friday, just didn't participate. That's usually a good sign, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him get his first start against Vegas, depending upon how everybody is doing in terms of you know getting through practice over the course of this week. A couple little things that I'd love to see from the Saints, and please tell us the things that you would like to see from the Saints below as well as they take on the Raiders in Las Vegas. Just want to see that offense improve, whether Michael Thomas is on a pitch count or not. Just a little bit more rhythm, a little bit more efficiency, a little bit more accuracy from Drew Brees. Saw him maybe not be his most accurate self during this game, but of course, you know, look, he didn't get his usual preseason reps. The first half felt like a preseason for the most part, although the offense for the Saints was very disciplined, not drawing really any penalties, any flags, anything like that. So that was really great, although we saw a lot of defensive pass interference penalties and then some uh, questionable unnecessary roughness penalties as well. But I'll leave that at that. Uh, so look, I think there's a lot of reasons to be excited about this team moving forward to next week. And I look forward to being back here with you after the Monday night game against the Las Vegas Raiders, hopefully talking about the Saints second win in a row to open up the season. Don't forget to like and subscribe here at the Canal Street Chronicles page, uh, St. CSC. Check us out at CanalStreetChronicles.com. Of course, you can listen to my podcast every Monday through Friday, wherever you get your podcast from, Locked on Saints. And of course, make sure that you contribute here. Let us know what it is that you want to see from the Saints, what you like that you saw from the Saints, and what else is going on when it comes to uh, these New Orleans Saints here. Lots of exciting stuff, I think, down the road. And uh, very much looking forward to having this journey along with all of you here on the Canal Street Chronicles YouTube page. Thank you very much for joining us and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.